Hey, good Saturday morning, everybody. Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. And last night, if some of you, especially in South Carolina, woke up to some big thunder and some gusty winds, we had a long-lived thunderstorm complex move across the area between 3 and 6 a.m. And we could see another one today head our way, maybe more in the daytime hours. Let me show you what's going on. If you slept through this, you know, you, I was talking about this on my Facebook page yesterday. Um, that complex is now off the coast of the Carolinas. It was flying. And behind it, is another complex of storms. You can see it over Kentucky and Tennessee. This one's a little further north, so this is going to put more of the North Carolina counties under the threat of some storms today. And there's a third one developing back here in northern Missouri and parts of uh, southern uh, southern Iowa. So we're kind of lined up in this northwest flow. We're going to see these waves of storms move down complex after complex after complex here in the next 24 hours. And if you missed it last night, there were some pretty big storms that moved across the area. Uh, let me show you real quickly. I'm going to switch over to um, the damage reports from last night, and I'll slide this over. So these are the wind gusts associated with that first complex. Look at some of these gusts. Um, 75, 80, 85 miles per hour even caused wind damage all the way down into South Carolina. And just to show you, I'm going to turn on um, the storm reports with the, with the thunderstorm wind damage. We'll put just the wind damage in here. I want to move that. Look at all the reports of damage. So that thing you know, is basically what we would classify as a derecho, which is a long-lived wind event as it basically produced damage from Missouri all the way through Kentucky, Tennessee, North, Western North Carolina, and parts of South Carolina. So later today, we're going to see another one of those approach from the West. So kind of let me show you what it's going to look like. I'm going to turn this off and we'll go right to the future cast to kind of show you how they're going to line up so you can kind of plan around these today. Um, there's the short range guidance. I'm going to load in the next 18 hours. So we'll see it load right in front of your eyes there. Did you see how it kind of moved in? And I'll let it load here for a second. Once it's done loading, I'll show you um, how this is going to unfold later today. So we're just getting this to load up here. Okay, we'll pause it now. Before I do that, let me turn on the day one severe weather outlook as well. So you kind of get the idea on where these storms are going to go based on the severe weather outlook. You could see moving basically right in this direction. So you can see the Charlotte area is, is in the low threat for severe storms and then to the south kind of the medium threat. But I'll be honest with you, we probably could tug this line a little bit further north. I wouldn't be surprised to see this line maybe up in here. So if I were to do this, I would actually probably shade this area in here as well. So just a FYI, the potential for damaging winds with these lines as well. So let me turn that off. We'll put the, the model into motion here. Um, we'll show you what's going to happen. Did a really good job with this last night with our short range guidance, um, which is what you kind of use to kind of track these big complexes. So this is 2 o'clock this afternoon, um, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. You can see this cluster making it uh, through the mountains and then down into the Piedmont. And again, um, the mountains have a huge impact on our weather, but I think a big myth is that the mountains block storms. They don't block these type of complexes. <laughs> As we saw last night, they can make it down here. These are driven by such huge things in the atmosphere that the mountains are like a speed bump. So don't count on the mountains breaking them up um, like you do with some types of weather. This is not going to happen with these. So right around 5 o'clock, you can see the line of storms. And because of the, the shape of it, it's another one of those giant bow echoes. So strong straight line wind. So I wouldn't look at specific timing here as like 5.11. I would look at more of like the, the 4 p.m. to about 6 or 7 p.m that that line of storms is going to move across the area um, tonight. So just heads up, evening plans right around dinner time, you're likely going to see some big time storms. And we got to keep an eye upstream because we might see another complex develop up here and right around southern Iowa and northern Missouri, which might eventually form and then move down this direction as well for maybe Sunday. So just a heads up that we might see another one of these on Sunday. And just to kind of show you that, I'm going to actually go back here. We'll go to a longer range uh, model here. I'm actually going to swip, switch over to the, the NAM, which can go out to 60 hours. We'll load that. Well, it might take a second to load here, so give it a second. We'll see if it loads up. All right, so we've got a little bit longer range guidance here. So you can see the, the complex coming down later today. There it is moving across the Piedmont. 
Um, so kind of the same same timeline, but actually this guidance shows some storms lingering into the overnight hours, which will be interesting to see. Remember, each one of these thunderstorm complexes, we call them MCSs, just a fancy name for a big cluster of thunderstorms. Um, if you really want to know what that acronym is, Mesoscale Convective System. Mesoscale is, is a way to determine size, which is a thunderstorm. Um, and convective means thunderstorm. Um, current, which is basically a convection oven, that's what happens in a thunderstorm, and then system. You put them together and it's an MCS, we call it. So it's just an acronym for these big complexes of storms. If you notice this other one developing upstream tonight, is something to keep an eye on for Sunday. It kind of falls apart, but then as we go into Sunday and Monday, these things are moving across the Midwest. So just something to keep an eye on that potentially could give us a couple waves of storms. One tonight around 5 p.m., to 7 p.m. and then maybe another one on Sunday. So there's going to be some pretty active northwest flow. And in between, it's actually going to be pretty nice. The sun is coming out right now. Skies should clear in many locations and it actually should be a pretty nice afternoon. So in between these waves, there's our first uh, system there, second one and maybe third one. There's a few sprinkles down in South Carolina, but looking at the visible image, which I can show you real quickly, I'm going to pull up um, I thought I had the visible image. I'm going to show you the visible image here real quickly um, just to show you that we've got some low clouds and some drizzle down in South Carolina. But look at the sun breaking out ahead of this next system. And as it comes down, we'll keep an eye on that thunderstorm fuel. It's kind of reloading. This first one used up some, but new thunderstorm fuel developing ahead of this next wave. And you can kind of see these thunderstorm complexes are forming on the edge of the big ridge of high pressure, which is centered over the middle of the country down here. We call this the ring of fire sometimes. You may have heard me refer to that on air because if you think about the high pressure um, essentially being centered right in here, right here, the thunderstorm complexes will rotate like a ring like this. And so that's where we get the name ring of fire. So um, heads up again this afternoon for a, a, maybe a line of storms around four, five, six, seven o'clock. But until then, um, once these clouds move out, you got plenty of time to head to the pool, the lake, get some yard work done, and then we'll see those storms moving in. Hope you have a great Saturday. I'll post any warnings or watches that get issued coming up this afternoon or this evening on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.